First off, Salman Rushdie, as you all know, was attacked, but there's some more information that, uh, you know, you may not have necessarily heard from the media, but I don't really think you needed to, because mm -hmm. I think you can guess who's behind this. I warn you, there's obviously some disturbing footage. Friday, he was stabbed in the neck during a lecture in New York. In case you've missed it, here's a clip. Yeah, I think this is a different angle from the original footage. It is, yeah. They caught him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they caught him. I don't know how he was allowed to get that close to the stage, and uh, that's also why yeah. when we do our shows, we have very specific protocols with security, yes. the kind of stage we use, the distance from the stage, and uh, a lot of people with the guns. So... He we now he was interviewed. The guy that they caught, I didn't realize that. Oh, was he, he said I ran so far away <laughs> Did I didn't yes. get away. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody? I think you're right. Because <laughs> I ran. He also sang Barbie Girl, which was weird. That just know, seemed that didn't yeah. seem related though. Well, it was Un unrelated. Just yeah. seems like of, something that the, the insane lament. So the attacker we now know is 24 year old Hadi Matar, mm -hmm. Polish. <laughs> <laughs> According to the European and Middle Eastern intelligence uh, officials, they said that uh, Matar had been in direct contact with members of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps on social media. And that's, just so you know, a branch of the Iranian military founded by the Ayatollah Khomeini. So yeah. Iran said this has nothing to do with the Iranian government and then proceeded to blame Salman Rushdie and his fans. Like, it was really, it was his fault. Because he shouldn't have said that. We didn't do anything, but shouldn't have said any of those things that we don't like. Shouldn't have been in public either. Yes. And we, uh, we had to stab him. There's yeah. no choice. Here's the thing. We don't play by your rules. This is the problem. The left is going, why would you say something that would affront them? Because we don't care. Yeah. We don't care if it's against their Islamic. We don't follow Islamic law. We don't follow Sharia law. And just like uh, Dr. Ben Carson whispered until I fell asleep, he said that the uh, Quran is completely incompatible with the Constitution. This is exactly why. This is a shock because it took place in New York. This takes place every day across the Islamic world. And by the way, all the time in Europe. The only place you're even remotely safe is the United States if you speak out against Islam. By the way, I'm not a big fan. Muhammad, serial rapist, pedophile, warmonger. So just last week, also, the uh, another member of the uh, IRGC, because I don't want to say Iranian <laughs> Revolutionary yeah. Guard Corps. Every it's like the abbreviation time. is still way too long. Yeah. They were charged with a, a plot to kill John Bolton. And uh, just in completely unrelated news, well, we were, remember covering this on... Uh, I think it was on Tuesday or Wednesday mm -hmm. in Albuquerque. There were Islamic people who were killed, right. and they were suspecting white supremacy. Uh, turns out it was uh, actually a, a, a Muslim himself no. in Albuquerque. What? 51-year-old named Muhammad Sayed. So, he looks like he should be white. Yeah. Well, yeah. He looks like he's wearing Islamic face. Yes, he looks like yeah. he's the dad on happy days. Yeah. Terrorist like <laughs> me. Except it's unhappy days. Well, and, and CNN well, not and for him. MSNBC, they could not get there fast enough to say this is probably more evidence of white supremacy in the United States and we have to catch this killer. Muslim shops were actually closing down. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, there's a mad white gunman on the loose. And they're yeah. like, oh, it's one of ours. And then nothing. Yeah, then it's like, the call's coming from inside the house. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, well. We so really, as opposed to white supremacy, homegrown extremists, it was an imported actual terrorist. <laughs> Cool. No word on a fact check from CNN or, uh, you know, uh, any kind of uh, retraction. Mm. So let me just do the math here. This last week we've seen uh, a Muslim attempt to murder a writer for his opinions on Islam, Salman Rushdie, uh, a plot from one of that same uh, People's Front Liberation of Iranian no bikinis, whatever it is, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. murder the former national security advisor, you know, a plot for it. Uh, yeah. Muslim arrested for murdering other Muslims. Yeah. It's basically gotten almost no national coverage. And I think I'm figuring out why it's... White supremacy, that's the problem that we're facing, right? Is that right, number one exactly. problem. It's yeah. the number one terrorist It's the number one terrorist threat. I just want to make sure, I had, are we all nailed, in agreement? No, you nailed it. Yeah. It's white supremacy. Correct. Good. And this authors, they're a big problem. Authors are a big problem. You know yeah. Particularly lose. the people who wrote the Quran. I like somebody got stabbed in, and is going to lose their eye. I was about to and say, the yeah. response of the left is like, well, you shouldn't have provoked it. Right. Like, yeah, that's not how America works. <laughs> no, that's yeah. not the how it works. Freedom of speech. Where, on, where are you on the, well, you shouldn't have dressed like that? Yeah, because it's the <laughs> same <laughs> comment. It's the exact same argument. To be fair, yeah. Salman Rushdie was a little cleavagey. He, well, yes. He did have a good bosom. He I don't did. think he was a little did. stabby. I don't think you can. I don't think. I'm not saying it's on. justified. I'm just saying it takes two to terrorist tango. Watch Louder with Crowder live Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.